Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monte, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. If you're a regular follower of this report, you'll know I keep my lines on the chart so you can see how the forecast worked out. And last Friday, which is right here, I drew this diagonal line down with the end of the line being my target at 344.05. And you can see that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we moved down to fill that gap, which right here is represented by that horizontal line right there. We filled the gap like we do 80% of the time, hit the target, and then reversed and rallied, which again is something that we normally see after a gap like that is filled. Now that we hit the targets, I'm going to remove all of my lines and draw my forecast for next week. I wouldn't get too excited about the rally over the last couple of days because as you can see, we have a drop in volume today right there as I magnify that. We have a drop in volume as we gapped up two days in a row. There is a significant resistance point right here at 355 for the diamonds and two gaps below the market. So I do believe that we are going to drop right back down. Now I'm going to go a little bit further out in my timeline there. That target is 345.35. That brings us into the first week of November. So I'm extending that out for a two week forecast. Keep your eyes on that because this gap fill point will most likely act as a support level after these gaps are filled. And you can see that the CCI down here is overextended. The stochastics is now in an overbought condition. So those are all bear signals. We have a wide divergence from this moving average right there. And that, again, points us in a downward direction. So keep your stops in place. Let's hop to IWM. I did not put out a forecast last week on that one. I covered Ethereum in a little bit more detail, so it took up some time. I will, however, put a forecast on for this week. Notice that two weeks ago, I drew that forecast line with the end of the line at being at 224.74. We hit that early on last week, and then, of course, we came right back to it. Look at this red candle on IWM. That's pretty pronounced. We had a drop in volume on the way up yesterday. See that green bar candle down there? We had a drop in volume after IWM gapped up. And that's a sign that the buyers are weakening. Today, the increase in the selling volume there is, again, hard to ignore. And you can see that the stochastics and the CCI are starting to hinge. Right there, the CCI, see that little hinge right there? And also the hinge is forming on the stochastics. One of the note that I'd like to point out is that while we have a higher high today from the high back here, we have a lower high on the stochastics. See that? It's known as a negative divergence. So now that these targets are hit, I'm going to erase all of the lines to clean it up a bit and draw my forecast for next week. I do believe that we're going to go right back down to fill this gap and at the same time test this 20 period moving average because the 20 period moving average is most likely going to continue up a bit while the price lingers above it but eventually this will also match with the gap fill support level so my downside target on IWM is 222.69 I don't want to be too redundant here but the traders that follow my reports especially my trade alerts know that a close below 210 is our signal to get out and reverse all of our long positions. We're going to be taking full speed ahead negative delta positions, which are all bearish, especially for the option traders now. So a close below 210, which is going to be a close below this low down here, is going to be our get out point. IWM has been stuck more or less in a sideways trading range, and we are absolutely enjoying that, especially the option traders as we trade the range. So that's IWM. Taking a look at the Qs, that's the tech sector, QQQ. You can see that we 
came very close last week to hitting this target that I put out last week with the close from Tuesday right here coming within pennies of that, but didn't hit. That's okay, because look at the oscillators. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to redraw my targets. Again, still to the downside. We're trading on the long side in our option trades in specific stocks. But again, longer term, my view for the Qs and the rest of the markets are going to be much lower. I am labeling this Red October. Keep your eye on this. I'm very close to sounding the alarm for anyone who is a buy and hold long-term investor, be very, very careful. I'll get to my reasons why I'm sending out the alarm very shortly in some of the reports that I'm finding out there looking pretty bearish for the general economy, let alone the markets. So my downside target on the Qs is 359.81. I do believe that this gap is going to fill, and that's why I've drawn that zip line. Again, thanks to Bruce Marshall. We're renaming that from a speed line to a zip line to alleviate some of the confusion that people are seeing with resistance speed lines. Very, very different. These are my forecast lines, again, showing the angle of the short-term trend that I'm expecting, along with the end of that line being the target. Again, 359.81 for the Qs. Let's take a look at the spiders. Take a symbol SPY. This is another one. Hitting the targets from last week. We did that early on. On Wednesday, hit that target precisely. Look at that. Remember, last week when I drew that line, none of this data was here. I drew that diagonal line to the downside with the end of the line being 431.85. And right there on Wednesday, what was the low? We hit that at 431.54 doesn't get much better than that. As soon as we hit the target, what happened? We gapped up two days in a row. So now that we hit the target right there, notice what's going on on the upside. We have a major resistance up here at the top. I don't even think we're going to get that high on Monday and Tuesday. I think we're going to start trading lower as more and more investors start digging into the news about the supply chain crisis that's about to hit us. So I don't think there's much confidence in the longer term investors and there was a report that came out from Goldman that they took an $880 million hit and they're quietly selling billions of dollars out of the longer term positions. So that's, you know, approaching a billion dollar hit in Q2 and they're quietly, that was the key word that I saw in that article, quietly selling at a long position. So I'll put the link to that article in the description box so you could read it for yourself. But yeah, that's selling it quietly. That's interesting, isn't it? Okay, looking into next week, I'm looking for a pullback all the way down to fill that gap, filling both of those gaps to the downside. That downside target on SPY is 436.46. Notice the angle in which I drew that zip line. If I duplicate that, just like this, you'll see that that angle shows up quite often. And not only does the angle show up, but the duration of these downward legs. See this? Kind of matching up. This one back here in August was a little bit steeper than what I'm drawing. But again, these zip lines are nothing more than me looking at former legs up or down, duplicating them, and then attaching them to the pivot points where I believe they're going to show up. So I think that's a pretty reasonable forecast for SPY. Again, if you are long at this particular point, protect yourself with stops. Nothing wrong with taking profits because you can't lose money taking profits. Remember that. And again, downside target 436.46. Now, let's talk about the VIX because I'm going to give, I'm doubling up on my guarantee because look what happened with the VIX. We gapped down two times in close proximity. Right here is a gap, and then we gapped down again. Look at all of this red. Talk about a stale red light. Look at this, all red coming down. Today, on the VIX, right there, we closed with a candle that looks very much like a hammer pattern. If there was no shadow above that candle right there, that'd be a perfect textbook hammer. I treat that just like any other hammer pattern. 
That is second most bullish candle you're going to find. In addition to that, we have the stochastics in oversold condition. We have the CCI oversold and starting the hinge. We got a gap above the market here. Again, the gap above the market. I'm leaving that price target in place right there. I'm going to move that on over. That gap fill is 2130. That's my price target on that. So I'm just going to move that on up and match it just like that. I'm actually going to go up a little bit steeper in that angle right there. Delete that. And that is a guarantee that I'm putting out that these gaps are going to fill. How can I be so sure? Well, just look at the VIX. Historically, 100% of all the gaps that have ever been created since the VIX has been around have filled, especially the gaps to the downside. Remember, this is an oscillating indicator. It's not a stock. It does not trend. It oscillates. So those gaps will fill. Mark my words. And if you're an option trader and you're looking to buy calls or you're looking to maybe buy puts on the SPY because that's inversely related, at least for the most part, you could do very well with that. So that's the VIX putting that target all the way up here to the gap fill. And I'm going to draw that horizontal line to show that. This support level was broken, but it looks like it's going to reverse at this support level down here. One other thing I want to point out on the weekly chart, especially for the VIX, you can see that we are approaching record lows here. And when you have record lows on the VIX, that is usually a sign that a top is in place. And I've already called all the tops for the major markets. I called the top on the diamonds on September 24th. I'm holding that as a top, not a high is a big difference. A topping pattern is just that. It's a pattern. Once we start breaking down below key support levels, it's watch out for the bears. So here we go. Last forecast here is going to be in ETH, Ethereum. This is the Ethereum ETH, right? This is grayscale. It tracks the Ethereum going to the daily chart. You could see that my downside target was within reach right there. We hit that moving average right there on Wednesday, formed a bullish engulfing candle, and now I'm setting my sights lower. Notice what's happening. I'll race these lines to clean it up. Notice what's happening right here. Let me zoom in. We have two dojis back to back. That's a sign of indecision. Those dojis are also showing up right at a key resistance area. We have gaps below the market. I know I had some questions last week about those gaps. I answered those questions in the chat below in the comments. So you can look at that if you want to know why I don't always follow these gaps precisely like I would the VIX because it's tracking the underlying crypto market. However, I am putting a downside forecast for next week down to test that Support level at the moving average right around 3132 to be exact. That's going to be 3134 again on my line. The moving average, you see that little bubble to the right that's 3132. So, right in this area, I'm expecting that support level to be tested. I am personally trying to buy Ethereum down here at this gap fill level. I have buy orders in right around 3050 on the Ethereum itself. And so, this is my entry level right here because a lot of times when these gaps fill we get bounces so i'm very comfortable buying in this area right here again just letting you know what i'm doing before i actually do it giving you a little bit of an advantage there i don't try to, to trade ahead of anybody i generally allow our members to make the trades first and then i'll follow up with my orders as well so you got the notice ahead of time now let me wrap up with this hsbc is showing some reports here that's showing how bad this supply chain issue is. If I go in here and look at this chart, you'll see that this is basically showing the congestion at the Los Angeles ports and Long Beach. Okay, this is just right here what's happening at Long Beach. Look at that. This is incredible. Now, this is a week old already, and the number of container ships are just mounting up now, not just off the coast of Los Angeles and San Pedro Bay, but off the coast of Newark. 
You got up there in, in Washington. You got Savannah. And they're just stacking up. Now, fortunately, there is some light being shown at the end of this very bleak tunnel right now. And that comes from Ron DeSantis in Florida. He has invited these container ships to come to Florida because we have the space. In fact, um, living in Florida, I know for a fact we have more coastline than all the other coastline combined for the U.S. And so we have the ability to move these containers. And we'll have to see how that plays out. There is resistance. Of course, political wars going on still. Even with our economy at stake, they're going to fight those political battles. If they have the ability in Florida to offload, then bring them on. That's what I say. Truckers could come down here and bring their families to Disney at the same time if they like. I don't care. It'll help the local economy as well. But this is a serious problem. And you cannot ignore this as an investor or a trader. I'll put the link to this article as well. If you're ignoring what's going on here, then you're adding risk to your portfolio. That's the way I'm, I'm looking at that. You can look at the, at the Qs on the monthly chart, and it's still looking very bearish. Again, I'm calling this Red October because if you zoom in to this, even if we go a little bit higher on the Qs, that will be the second most bearish candle as a hanging man that is following a bearish engulfing. That's the number one bearish signal followed by the number two most bearish signal. And so the writing is on the wall here, folks. We've got sell signals below in the CCI down here and across with a sell signal last month on the stochastic. So if you're looking at the monthly charts, that's telling us watch out below. And all of the evidence is stacking up. The writing is on the wall, like I said before. Pay attention, keep your stops in place, and stay tuned to this market report. Please, if you would, like and share. Share this with people that you know are invested in the market or at least looking to how to trade the markets to make money. We make money faster on the way down. We trade options. We teach people how to do that. And, of course, subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll know when this alert comes out right away. So have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week. So long.